Yo, welcome Flyfers to another advanced PvE guide, today showcasing the full support Ringmaster. In this guide we want to cover all the way from level 90 to 120. If you are still in the level 1 to 90 range, don't worry, we already have a beginner guide available on the channel. You should go check this out first before you return to this one. But before we start with the video, I noticed that 20% of my viewers are subscribed to the channel and the other 80 are not. So let's make a deal. You watch this video all the way to the end and I'm sure you earned your subscription by then. Let's go. Ringmaster, full support, really easy. To stat, all you need is full intelligence. The reason why is that is that all your buffs are now scaled on intelligence. This means um, if you're having, um, let's say GT, Gibraltar Tirith, the strongest uh, Ringmaster buff, and each additional 20% of intelligence will increase your attack that you're getting by 0.5%. So this is muy bien, really good, because intelligence increases even your heal, your buffs, it's anything you need, and you do not tank any mobs, since you're basically the supporter, so you do not need any stamina overall. Well, okay, I just talked about we do not need any stamina at all, but our build actually does allow us to get to um, decent health levels that are about 9 to 10k. And this, this reason, uh, therefore, also you are more tanky than a full damage damage dealer even. So this means if a red mob ever turns on you, you can relax, heal yourself and your mate can just kill it and you can, yeah, stay at it relaxed. And... Um, in the other guide, we did recommend going for a level 90 set. Since you are a support ringmaster, you do not need a weapon upgrade, for example. All you need to look out for is cast time so you can heal faster. Uh, if you're looking for a set, the Shupon set is fine because it gives you intelligence, this boosts your buffs, more cast time, faster healing, faster buffing, and increased healing as well. In this, in the early beginner guide, I did suggest a 28% MP or 28% or like 16% HP if you're having trouble with going against red mobs a lot. With the new um, guide and now you're having like a whole lot more of intelligence, you can forfeit the 28% MP and go definitely for a 28% HP build right here. The reason why is that is you now have so much int and so much MP that you can still maintain the full support without using a refresher hold, even with having 28% HP in the suit. Uh, and the necklace set that is going to be your set of choice can go for um, slightly better stats than the previous set with 5% more healing compared to the other one and 10% more cast time and five intelligence. Your weapon of choice will be the legendary golden stick with again everything you need intelligence cast time and healing you do not need to upgrade this as it will not, will not benefit um, something that's important to note is that the upgrade suggested for the set here is also not um, required you do get a bunch more stats this way but it is really minor so only do this if you're having like the funds and are really rich now what should you actually be getting for Assists, uh, like sticks, are a bit of a unique one because they can have an attribute on them that um, is not skill related basically. It's called healing and can increase any source of healing. So no matter which skill you're using of the healing skills. And this is the reason why you do want to have healing percent on your stick as well. You're already having a bunch of healing percent. So um, it is not worth try harding for this only do it if you have spare you can heal perfectly fine without this this is just a like little icing on the cake now what kind of jewelry you should wear um, overall i wouldn't recommend upgrading a gore necklace at such a high level at all but 
getting a, such a good core necklace compared with some speedos will basically make you unkillable in case of any rats and will result in you ba never losing any experience while leveling. And this fact is pretty huge actually if we're talking about the higher levels where death actually hurts you and can sometimes mean like you just waste 20, 20 minutes of your life trying to get all the XP back that you already had by just making a mistake. And the highest priority in jewelry upgrading is definitely the Intelli ring right here because this intelligence will boost all your buffs again and your healing. The only thing you have to be careful here is um, other than the Clockworks jewelry, the upgraded ones um, do require a bit of attention because the speeder plus three is showcased, yo, you have to be level 88 to wear it, okay? And those, you need a table that actually tells you how far can you upgrade the ring so you know when to stop, so you don't accidentally upgrade it higher than you're actually able to wear it. And this table can be found on the upgrade guide that is in the channel, additional informations included as well. Now, which skills to use? We do not want to mention all the effects of all the skills since this is just like, let's say it's common knowledge by now. So I made a red, um, red square around every, every skill that you should be focusing on maxing. And important is that the buff order, those right here are all the buffs and make sure that the buff order you are maxing them always fits your partner that you have played the most. So for let's make an example. If you're playing with a mage, nah? like an hit and run elementer, make sure to have mental sign and quick step maxed first. If you're playing with like an auto attack plate, make sure that you have haste, beef up and adversary maxed first. Something like this, like always make sure that you have the perfect buffs for your teammates. And then there's two options for healing. So if you're on a single target healing, you would you choose the heal right here. If you wanna heal multiple members of your party, you would use the heal rain over here. Now, what does the typical play style look like? If you're a ringmaster, you're basically caught in a cycle and you will have a repetitive, um, repetitive functions. So your main goal is having all buffs up running on your partner at any time. If they are receiving any damage, you do want to heal them. And if you have time in between this, those two tasks, make sure you help them while so they can deal more damage. And this is done by doing, by casting Moonbeam or Holy Cross or both onto the monsters your mate is fighting against. This only applies if you are teaming up with 1v1 characters. If you're teaming up with AOE characters, you only stick strictly to the buff and healing options right here. Yeah. So we are at the end of the video. I hope you liked it and I earned your subscription by now. If you still have any questions open, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I would be really happy if you give this video a thumbs up and stop by our streams in Twitch that are starting on the 14th of June. Cheers.